Hello everybody, it's me Bree at 135 and welcome back to my channel. It's been a couple weeks since I uploaded and honestly I didn't upload because I was, I was lazy. Um, and so now I'm back finally with another video and this video is kind of special because I want to touch on some aspects of Japanese culture that I've experienced thus far while living in Japan. So the big thing I want to talk about today is Enkais. If you don't know what Enkais are, they're basically a after work party that you have with your group of coworkers after the end of an event, whether that's graduation or the various culture festivals and opening ceremonies that they have throughout the school year. Actually, um, I attended an Enkai about a week ago with my fellow foreigner teachers as well that was in the region. So because they were foreigners, they're more open to me filming them. So I was actually able to film the Enkai, which I'll um, put the clips a little bit later in the video. Um, but first I want to try to get into like the culture of the Enkai, and what you should do, what you shouldn't do, how it compares to American culture. So let's get started, yeah. The first thing that you do when you go to, when, uh, Ugh, take two. <coughs> the first thing that you have to do at an Enkai is arrive obviously to the Enkai. And so when you do that, your coworkers will either A, offer to pick you up, or B, there's usually some type of quote unquote party van that will transport you from like your school or your house, wherever, to the actual place of the Enkai. Both of the occasions that I went to an Enkai with my Japanese co-workers, a co-worker who was also driving um, offered to pick me up and take me to the Enkai place. Um, and one thing that should be duly noted is that the reason why there's either a party bus or a co-worker that drives you to the place is, or you know, basically a big old carpool. Um, is the fact that Japan has a zero tolerance for drinking rule. So basically, even if you take one sip of alcohol, that is already over the limit. So usually coworkers will either carpool or have the party bus for that very purpose. After you arrive to the place of the Enkai, which it'll either be at some, actually I don't know where it might be. There. Once you get there, you will walk in and either you will see your coworkers sitting down or you'll go to the front and uh, the restaurant waiter person will tell you where your party is or you'll be with your coworkers so they already know what's up. So you're gonna walk in and then once you get to where your coworkers are, usually you uh, do slots. I don't know if slots is the right word. Basically, um, you're given assigned seating and the way to determine your seating is usually at random. So usually they'll give you like a little cup with like sticks in it and you pull out a number and that number will coincide with where you sit at the Enkai table. After you finally have your seat, you sit down and you talk a little bit until the time that it actually begins um, and kind of just catch up with your coworkers if you didn't already see them that morning um, and just see how they're doing. Once, you're, while you're talking in the middle of that, before the Enkai actually starts, you'll see servers coming in and out of the room in order to bring a crap ton of alcohol as well as like your dishes for the night. Um, and so now I'm going to flip over to some clips that I took at the Enkai that I was at a couple weeks ago and explain more about what you'll see or kind of get a general feel of what you would go through. Okay, you see this right here? This is your go-to cup. This is beer and you never, ever, ever leave this empty, ever. It'd be bad if you did that. And now this guy right here, He's your boss. So he's the one kind of in charge of hosting the Enkai, and so he's gonna do a little speech where he thanks everybody for coming, and we all hand clap and say yay. And after that, we do the kanpai. Kanpai is, basically, it means cheers in Japanese. So you do a big toast with all your coworkers and whatnot just to say like, hey, let's get this party started, let's have some fun, drink a lot of alcohol, and let's get drunk. After that, you're gonna take your sip and have a grand old time, but let's not forget this. You're gonna order alcohol for the rest of the night and be drunk by the end because your coworker is gonna keep that cup full. After that, you're gonna have a lot of food, which you're gonna enjoy, and by the end of the night, you're gonna be drunk, talking to your coworkers in broken Japanese about how your day went, and 
possibly philosophies on life. And yeah, that's, that's really about all there is to this thing. Pretty short and simple. So one rule that I've learned while attending these NCOS is that you never, ever, ever let your neighbor's drink cup go empty. So the person that's sitting to your right, to your left, as soon as that beer cup gets like low, like the cup, and then this is like this much alcohol, you better be having that next bottle up and like, oh, okay, here you go, enjoy. Um, <clears throat> and it's just seen as respectful and also kind of warm and inviting for you to do that. And also you'll get good points with your boss if you do that. And lastly, I want to touch on what's different between, let's just say, oh, after work dinner in America and after work dinner in Japan. So in America, they stress that you should never have as many drinks as your boss. Usually there's like a one or two alcoholic drink rule in America, um, just so you can not look sloppy. I mean, this is your boss, of course, so you want to put on a good face. In Japan, that's not the case. Um, at these Enkais, it's basically a time for you to get lit. Like, I'm talking about really, really lit. So, by the end of the night, I've been at Enkais where my principal and my vice principal, everybody is gone. And I'm just sitting there like, hmm, okay. Yes, you want another one, Dozo? Here you go, let me pour you another drink. Cause you know, it's a rude for you to not to be, you know, not to pour the other person a drink. Um, and I myself have gotten a little bit tipsy, but never drunk to like, as drunk as I've seen some of my coworkers. It kind of puts like a ease off your back. Cause now I don't have to necessarily like watch myself or well, you should always watch yourself. But in a sense, it's kind of like, okay, I don't have to be cautious like around my boss, like how I would in American party scene, work after work party scene, as opposed to a Japanese one where I could, you know, let loose, talk to my coworkers about whatever, and just have a grand old time. Lastly, I just wanted to do this video because if you are coming to Japan to work or wherever, and it's your first time coming, and especially if you're coming alone, then this was for you. I'm in a very special situation because I am the only foreign person and person of color in my school and well in my staff. So that basically means that everything that I've witnessed, I've kind of had to roll with the punches and experience firsthand. And so I wanted to make this video in order to help you, whoever it might be, who may be feeling anxious about going to the NCA, especially if you're going there by yourself. And if your if your Japanese skill isn't good, my Japanese sucks. But in my defense, I just started learning seven months ago, so of course I am still a beginner. I have ways to go, but um, that's why I made this video. Hopefully, this video will help you or give you some type of validation or at least a rough guide of like what you'll see when you enter the Enkai, so that way you will be less scared or preemptuous or you know whatever it may be when you go to your first Enkai. so with that being said it's me Bree at 135 i hope you enjoyed this video till then see you next week